So today I'm getting involved with Migrant Help as it's a charity that really does resonate with me. My grandparents moved from their respective countries, both Guyana and Pakistan, back in the 60s. I think it's important today that we really do shine a light on this particular cause because it hasn't been the greatest media representation of migrants coming to the UK. I think after appearing on Love Island, people have a lot of nice things to say about my experience on the show, you know, kind of showing that Asian men can be portrayed in a positive light in the media. And hopefully we can meet Osam and meet Eduardo, hear their stories. As a human being, you are all the time looking for um, developing your dreams. And one of them is offer to your family a safety place to live. Nobody chooses to be a refugee one day. Many people say to me, you have to be positive and you have to be strong and try to, to do some, something good for yourself and try to change my life, you know? I'm grateful for the sacrifice that my grandparents have made for me to be here today. And I'm here to meet Osam and Eduardo from El Salvador and Yemen to hear their stories and how they want to better their lives. Osam. Hello. Kefale. Nice to meet you, Nas. So you were a nurse back in Yemen? Yeah, I used to work as a nurse, but it wow. wasn't safe. Yeah. Because I work, uh, I work in a hospital. Yeah. Then they asked me to uh, to work in medical camp, mm. you know, in the front line in the war. Oh, and wow. I yeah, I had many friends went there and they died. Oh my god, that's it's crazy. not safe, yeah. It's not safe. I want to improve my English to get high level English to yeah, to be able to work as a nurse again. Tell me a little bit more about your journey from Yemen to where you are today. Uh, I had difficult experience during the, my journey. I lived in a small tent with 7,000 of people and no toilets. They made fire and it was fighting, it's not safe. And it's really scary yet. So it hasn't been an easy journey. You travel by rubber boat as well? Yeah, rubber boat. I can't swim. You can't even swim? Yeah, but I don't have any choice. Because, oh. yeah, <clears throat> when you're in a bad situation, Yeah and you don't think about anything, just how to survive, yeah. you know? When I was on the boat, I remember I was in a bad situation, and they said, okay, it's nothing. Yeah. I, I, I did, or... If you can do that, you can do anything. Yes. Yeah. So being a migrant in the UK, what's it been like? How have people received you? When I was in, uh, in Ben Ali camp, I think it's because it was the first time they say refugee or asylum, in their area mm. and this is not your country you have to go back to Yemen and uh, they should understand our mm. situation consider our situation yeah. and uh, to understand that nobody chooses to be a refugee yeah. if uh, if you ask someone here you want to be a refugee in other, in other country one day mm. he will say no Why I left El Salvador it was because I was kidnapped by the gangs in my country. I was 19 when I was kidnapped. Oh my god. That is crazy. So what, what happened once you were kidnapped? I was outside of the, of the church and I had to go to the supermarket. So on my way to the supermarket, there were some guys that they approached to me and they started to ask me um, to give it to them my belongings. I was just asking, can I, can I go back to my house? And they say, no. And that was the moment when, um, when I realized that I will never get back to my family. Yeah. When they, they, they realized that I, I was not helping them, mm. you know, um, they just told me, so if you don't want to help, we're gonna kill you. So they untied me, they put a gun on my head, and they asked me for um, doing my, my last prayer. Mm. When, when I was praying, I started someone shooting. And I thought that they were shooting at me. Mm. So I just lay down on the floor. But then I realized that it, they, they were not shooting at me. Mm. They were shooting someone else. When I, when I opened my eyes, there was nobody with me. And uh, 
I, I started to run away from that place. I mean, you clearly are very, very clearly, like, very headstrong, very brave young man as well to, Thank you. to kind of go through all of that and make it out the other end. So, so since coming to the UK, how would you say you've been perceived? Well, some people have stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Most of the people, they, they think like close. More than being uh, refugees, mm. we're human beings. Yeah, of course. That we can help the society. Yeah. And that's what we are looking for. Mm. So what's the plan now then, for you, now that you're in Cardiff, now that you're feeling a bit more settled? Um, well, I'm working mm -hmm. at the moment is a law firm which is they specialize in immigration. You cannot imagine how much hope they they get as soon as I speak with them. Yeah. Because when you arrive here, when I arrived here, I didn't know anything. Mm. I didn't know anyone. Yeah. I didn't even have a friend here. Yeah. So I was completely lost. Yeah. Loneliness is one of the things that destroy you. Yeah. Just met two really amazing young men today. I mean that's undeniable, the positivity, the, the energy that they radiate despite being what they've been through and despite, you know, telling me such an intense story. Both of them had both, both of them had such intense journeys just to be here today. I mean, hats off to them, you know, I mean, I couldn't, I don't think I would have such a brave face if I'd been through half the things that they've been through. You know, what really hit home, especially from Eduardo was, we aren't refugees, we are people. I feel blessed because I have this opportunity and I'm not gonna waste it.